All right, man, that thing's quick. That thing's so fast. Got me beat. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Let's see if I can zoom in, too, and show this, because that's what I wanted to really show. If this thing will let me zoom. Wow, that thing's zooming like crazy. Yeah, that's perfect. This is what I'm wanting to show right here. That's a perfect, uh, perfect everything, if I can get it right. Yeah. Well, it may look perfect to you, but it's a little bit off to me. That's a little bit more on kilter. All right, I'm going to plug this up. I want to get some thoughts out real quick, but uh, I'm trying to find my, if I can get my ability for my other device. I tried to tether this thing, man. I had so much going on, way too much going on people I'm trying to do 10 things at once I'm gonna to have to make a completely different video I got a little stressed about it. I gotta make a completely different video just on how to find your fuel mileage on your dash so that you'll know what I'm talking about or how to check it and you can delete it every single day I will be putting up a video that's the one you're gonna to want to watch so that you'll know how to work your dash so that you can get into your diagnostics of your computer you can also be able to um, change your fuel mileage uh, every day reset it so that you'll know if you got a brake chamber dragon on a trailer so that you'll know if you um, if you have a problem with your truck and all of this stuff so I'm fixing to get into this as much as I can I'm gonna try not to read the comments because I, I can't be distracted on what all the info I'm trying to put out but you can make all the comments you want now check this out the truck in front of me if you'll look okay just so you have a clear idea of what I'm talking about the truck to the left that is a it's a gold I don't know burnt orange looking color he has fender skirts on it he's got wheel covers on it he's got plastic in between the wheels to keep the drag down and plastic pieces behind there okay the truck behind him to the right back here is specced with flow through mud flaps which are good but he's got steel wheels okay both of them are condos so they got the wind resistance thing going where they push the wind up over the top of the trailer but well he's also got wheel to wheel fairings but he decided to go with steel wheels so aluminum wheels are lighter but it's the truck you have it's not about the truck you dream of or something that you're like well i need to buy a whole nother set of rears and get better fuel mileage unless someone changed it it's, it's probably going to be specced pretty good unless somebody changed it uh, and messed with the truck. So keep in mind, your truck was designed. Most of all these trucks come off the assembly line and a company will buy two or four or five or 20 of them. And they'll all be specced to what they want. What gears in the transmission, whether it's automatic or not, whether whatever the rears are, you know, um, what the gearing ratio is in the rears for whether they're pulling or, or what you know they, they've got their own little uh, idea of what they think is good and whether you get these wheel-to-wheel -wheel fairings or whether you get these hubcap covers and this other stuff that people are into now I will say this too there is air tabs that you can get that make them uh, make the wind blow past the cab okay this is just a good example right here okay let's see if I can put my hand in the shot show my finger in the shot somewhere where where is the camera at okay that's kind of crazy oh it's so zoomed in I get it okay so there right there is the fairing and people put air tabs all the way up here okay now um, I've been fogged up the glass a little bit um, what I was what I was trying to explain is that and I'll clear this off for you now or that's going to be something that's going to be in the shot. There we go. What I'm trying to explain to you is um, in the fairing, if I can point to it again, the back part of the truck that you should know what a fairing is. But if you don't, um, let's see. Okay. At the back, at the back part of the truck, the fairing has got uh, a rubber 
um, extra piece of rubber to extend the fairing so that if it hit the trailer it would it would rub but it wouldn't break the fairing and a lot of these fairings are breakaways anyhow in case people like uh, do like a jackknife but what, what I'm seeing is let's see if I can get back into the where the camera's at and so I can show it right here along that painted before you hit the rubber along that uh, painted part of the fairing people put what is called uh, air tabs okay you can stick air tabs on your truck right that's that's one way of, of messing with your fuel mileage right and you can add on those fuel optimizer things that go in line with your fuel line um, you can get flow through mud flaps there, there's, there's, there's a thousand things but I'm just gonna start off with this let's start off with the truth the truth is just like there's a speed of light that's the cosmic speed limit right just like if you go there okay they have said let me turn the switch off they have said that there's there's um they've measured stars that are moving faster than the speed of light it's because the universe is expanding or because they're in a black hole and time and space changes but outside of special relativity or uh keep him within the confines of talking about a truck now yes I understand if you drop a dump truck off of the Empire State Building you're gonna get phenomenal fuel mileage right but the delivery is pretty rough okay so let's let's if you want to make you know comments about that later or whatever I'll understand and that's fine but we're talking about over the road 80,000 pounds through mountains and valleys and hills and everything else that's actual truck and not a flat surface on the salt lake or the salt the sand flats out in california where they race stuff and they test or whatever real time actual trucking real trucking i'm talking about what you can actually do to actually make the truck you have now not go buy another set of rears not change your transmission but the spec truck that you have now get better fuel mileage okay so I've been asked this like I said by a lot of people can, it, can is there anything you any tips you got on getting better fuel mileage so like I said yes I've got a lot of them the first thing I would do okay let's say I bought that truck the first thing I would do all right you can make sure that you don't have any dragging pulleys or an air compressor that's about to lock up on your air on your air conditioning system or an alternator that's locking up or especially a tensioner pulley you can have them check that just by misting it at water if you take it into the dealership uh, Freightliner will test it with just spraying water on it and if it's any kind of little chirping it is going bad and then they'll they'll say it's bad they'll change it out for free under warranty if it's still under warranty and then you've got less drag so starting with the front of the motor, before you even get to the air filter, the front of the motor, you can use a half inch drive and a breaker bar, put it in the front of the tensioner pulley in that square hole that's in the middle of the tensioner pulley, not at the end close to the pulley itself, but in the middle. Pull it to you, take that belt off, not completely off, just off that pulley, and it will loosen it from the other pulleys, and then turn them by hand and see if you have drag that's not just a tensioner pulley it's also the idler pulleys it's also the alternator and the air conditioning compressor it should give you a little bit of a little bit of movement it shouldn't at least drag when it's not on and you'll find out when it is on if you hear noises from it now you can have a mechanic check that for you or you can do it yourself but then let's go to the air filter your diesel engine is air in air out it's a big air pump so it's like an air compressor but it's it's an air pump air in air out so you got two places you need to look the entrance which is the intake and the exit which is the exhaust the entrance the intake okay that's your air filter all right a lot of people are taking these trucks and they're trying to drive 30 
40, 60,000 miles between oil changes. Now, I appreciate the like. It's really stupid to think that you don't have to visit a shop, though, for 30, 40, 60,000 miles. Okay? Not to mention that people used to grease their trucks every weekend to keep the tie rod ends from breaking and wearing out. Okay? To keep the truck itself, you got to grease the fifth wheel. That's got to do with your steer tires working against the whole situation, and that can hurt your fuel mileage too, believe it or not. All the right and left that you do, if you are hung up with no grease on your fifth wheel, it's going to get bad fuel mileage too. Believe it. It's that, and it's going to wear out your steer tires more. Now, your tires being balanced. Let's, let's not get into that. Let's just start back, back at the front, back with the air filter. If your maintenance interval and your idea of changing oil is every 60,000 miles, okay, other than greasing the frame that you're not doing enough, you should do it every weekend, every two weeks at the most, other than, and your fifth wheel, other than the fact that you've got contaminants in that oil that don't change and they're going to wear out your crank with that oil that still they you think is still the lubricity's good in it but you're still running it but it's got all those contaminants in it but your air filter usually if you're doing 22 to 24 thousand miles and then getting oil change okay it used to be 18 on the dinosaur oil some people are still doing that or even 15 for some people it keeps the pollutants out of the oil, but also you'll know that on about a 20,000 mile deal, at least every other time, so every 42, 44,000 miles, maybe even every time, if you feel like you've been in a dusty situation, you're gonna change your air filter. Now there's people that say, oh, well you can get 100,000 miles out of an air filter. That sounds great. That means you just saved, well, $100 on an air filter, but here's the truth about it. In the meantime, while it's becoming full, you're getting worse and worse and worse fuel mileage. I just got passed by a bunch of bicycles. Now every, I'm telling you, I get photobombed by anything. Those were three wheel motors, uh, bicycles, whatever. You never know. So here's what I'm saying. While your fuel mileage is continually going down, you are wasting hundreds and hundreds of dollars in fuel to chase a hundred dollar savings in a air filter. That's retarded. Listen to what I'm saying, people, okay? The truck you have today can be a good fuel mileage truck even if it's an older one, like that far one over there, that Freightliner over there. It could be an old classic. They can even take and put a new computer in it. Williams, Detroit, some one of them places up north does that. You can Google them. And they can put a new computer that they have completely reprogrammed and it can handle the software and they've put a matched turbo to the truck I don't know exactly how much that costs, but I mean, a, a few thousand dollars is cheaper than buying a new truck, changing everything out, and hoping for the best. So I'm gonna say this, even on an older truck, you can get 7.5 miles a gallon. I'll break that all down for you in a minute, but let's go back to the air filter. To start with, you cannot make an air filter go 60,000 miles and think that in the meantime you're not losing money trying to just save money on one air filter. So let's just throw that out with the water. It's just as dirty, okay? All right. The bath water I'm talking about. It's an old saying. So throw that out and forget that idea. Forget about saving money on an air filter. You're saving money on fuel by putting a new one in there. It's air in, air out. Okay, so every oil change and do your oil change about every 22 to 24,000 miles at the most, rather than trying to wait for 60. And in the meantime and in between time, go in there every two weeks and get it greased. Or get a grease gun and do it yourself every weekend. Okay, I've got two grease guns. I went in when things, when it was cool to have a chrome grease gun, I went and got the chrome one. I still have the old painted red one that works though. So people, I'm telling you, people that know, grease their trucks every weekend, every other weekend, right? Okay, and you definitely gotta buy the grease packs for your fifth wheel, I've been slapping them on there. I actually cut mine, and then squeeze it out, and then it's kinda weird for me to leave it as trash. So, all right, I don't just throw them up there, I usually cut them. Here's, here's what I'm saying though. Starting with the air filter in the front, you're getting a little bit better fuel mileage. Okay, let's go to the back of the engine. You've got a muffler. If you were in a car, 
you would say, man, this car's got 100,000 miles on it. I might need to put another muffler on there and get better fuel mileage, right? Why would you take an 18-wheeler that has dirtier burning fuel, which is diesel fuel, and try to get 600,000 miles on it before you change a muffler? So hear what I'm saying. If you have a Freightliner that has the dual mufflers, okay, what they call a five in, five out. I think it's what they call it, five inches in, five inches out. Um, okay, five in, five out muffler on each side, or you could have a single one, okay, and you don't have DEF, DPF, and all that. Your muffler probably weighs 10 times more than the new one you will buy. So first off, be aware of that and that you have to have new clamps and stuff, but be aware of that when you take it off, it's gonna weigh about 10 times more probably than the new one. And you're going, man, this thing's heavy. It's because it's full of soot and it's not doing its job. It's not resonating as well. It's not letting air flow through as well either. Now I'm gonna tell you this secret. Freightliner makes that, or they don't make it, they carry a aftermarket muffler that's about what well, used to be 52 bucks, probably now it's about 65 bucks. If you get their original manufactured equipment five in, five out, then you're talking about 100 to 120 bucks, maybe 160 bucks. So it's cheaper, they say it's louder, okay, to try to get you to buy the other one, it's not. It resonates a little different, it sounds like a Volvo, it really sounds good. I bought one, the old 96 I had, I've, listen, I've been through this, so air in, air out. If you have mufflers on an older truck, change your muffler out. It's air in, air out, okay? It will allow more air to flow through the muffler, okay? It's not gonna be a straight pipe if it's full. It's not gonna be good either, okay, for fuel mileage. So, the that would be about the fourth thing I guess that I will do that brings me to the fourth thing is this okay if you buy a truck that's even got more than a hundred thousand miles on it and you've already went through that you don't have any pulleys dragging you've got an air filter and if you have DEF DPF you can't do a whole lot about the one box and that exhaust but um, if you have a muffler you can change it out let's go further we want to get back to the original fuel mileage it got. Now you can't replace rings, and, and you know just on the fly, and you're not going to for 600,000 miles. So the pistons going up and down do wear the rings. So you got lower compression, but you can build that compression back up by putting additives in your fuel. You can pretty well make jet fuel, the JP, whatever you want to call it. It's similar to kerosene, and you can run jet fuel in an 18 wheeler. Keep that in mind that it's just for, okay, helicopters and airplanes, but helicopters especially. I knew a guy who was crazy enough to pull trees out of the woods with one, and he was running diesel, but diesel can have water in it. If you have a problem and it stutters or sputters, you're okay. If a helicopter sputters, it crashes. That's a problem. So they run jet fuel. They're all in the same family. I'll show a guy who shows, you know, uh, a well-made video where he tests the fuel in mason jars and shows you it's not more explosive it's just a highly refined kerosene or diesel fuel okay you can just about make diesel fuel into jet fuel if you have something that takes the water out of it and adds lubricity what they did to 18 wheelers it ought to be against the law but now they've made it so that they think it's better for the environment they took the sulfur out of diesel fuel sulfur used to lubricate the upper cylinders the, the, the valves and everything while they're opening intake, exhaust, ports, and also the cylinder walls where the rings go up and down. Well, sulfur somehow is lubricating in that way when it's burnt and it comes out and well, there you go. Well, they, they wanted to clean up the smoke and so they got rid of the sulfur. What does that do to us? Well, that damages your motor. They don't care. They'll sell another truck tomorrow. They, you know, have a different kind of fuel. They don't care what it does to you and your bottom line. So I'm gonna tell you what you do. You add additives. In the winter time, believe it or not, anti-gel lubricates the lubricity, okay? Adds lubricity to the diesel fuel and helps you out. Plus it ups your compression because it fills in the cylinder wall cracks a bit as it is, is running 
and it makes it almost like you have newer rings. The same thing in the summertime with Meaner Power Cleaner. Okay, how's Meaner Power Cleaner? And I use the Lucas in the wintertime, but how's Meaner Power Cleaner is that thing that I would do, number four, when you get another truck to clean the whole thing out. Now, it doesn't just lubricate injectors and give you top end lubrication where they took away and made ultra low sulfur for diesel and made it not good for your truck. But it also cleans out your line. If that truck's been sitting on a truck parking lot and the lines have any kind of, it could have algae, it could have whatever kind of mess now because also with ultra low sulfur diesel, it no longer allows, um, I mean, sorry, it, it, it allows algae to grow in it. So if you have a truck that's been sitting, you can have algae in your fuel tanks. A lot of these Volvos are having that problem. I don't know why it's just Volvos I've talked to people about, but they'll buy a truck and then they have to drop the tanks, clean injectors, it cost them a couple thousand dollars, all because it had algae in the tanks. Well, you can add some stuff in there to kill it, but meter power cleaner does help with that, but then the, also the other thing is this. It's all in the lines, okay? And it will also, ultra low sulfur diesel affects and makes asphaltines. Asphaltines are these little black little I don't know what you call them, pellets or whatever they are. It's like a, a slurry of, of asphalt because diesel fuel is a petroleum product and that's how they make asphalt. But whenever, whenever you don't have sulfur in diesel, it allows them to be created, okay? Like tar. Most times your water fuel separator catches it in the bottom. I showed draining one out, you know, and all that stuff. Well. It's no big deal if they're floating around in there. You, you get get out, you know, most of them, and it's not going to go through your system. But it can uh, clog up your filters. So in order to keep your diesel clean, that meaner power cleaner helps that, and it will shove everything through the line. Now that can be a double-edged sword. And I'll go into another fuel that'll actually help you. But the first time you do it, it could clog up your filters. It could leave you broke down. And if it's cold weather, it could leave you running like crap for a while till you get it warmed to back up. Okay, so the meaner power cleaner does good to shovel that stuff through the line, but it could stop up your filter. So you do it before you're gonna do an oil change and change your fuel filters. And it, it will shove all the stuff in the line the first time into your fuel filters. And you'll know that you're not worried about being broke down because you're planning to do the fuel filter change, it's a good idea to actually have fuel filters too because the DD13, DD15 kits, they don't always have them in anything but Baldwin. You, I, I like to use the original manufacturer's uh, spec, uh, I want to say uh, Donaldson or what was the other filter? There's 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 one that's, that's from Freightliner. So I try to use the original spec Freightliner filters and so to know that I have them, it's good to buy the DD13, DD15 kit. Um, spec for your truck from Freightliner, carry it with you in case you have an outside water fuel separator filter that clogs up uh, from either injector uh, cups going out or for whatever reason and keep a Davco wrench, but also keep the original, keep the whole kit, at least the fuel filters. And then when you go in for the oil change, at least for the fuel filters, you'll have the right ones and you get better fuel mileage out of better filters also. So, and it'll, and, it, and you know, they'll be ready for you if you're on the side of the road after you've done use some meter power cleaner and clean the stuff up if you have a problem where a fuel filter can collapse. If you don't know about fuel filter collapse, you haven't had that problem yet. But another thing is if you buy that truck off the lot and you take it straight to a place that sells biodiesel, and they have that biodiesel where they can put whatever percentage they want into those pumps, and you know Willie Nelson has a place where he's selling biodiesel. Everybody's got their own place, but they'll show you the percentage on the pump. But if you're not reading and you're just pumping diesel, you get biodiesel. It's gonna stop up your filters that first time if you have an older truck, and it will leave you shut down. Be planning on that. Have an extra fuel filter, a couple of them if you got a fairly newer truck that's got a lot of miles on it because it'll shove that stuff through the line hydraulically just like transmission fluid in an old engine or any kind of engine that you put transmission fluid in the oil to help clean out the push rods, not the main connecting rods, but the push rods that let oil up into the valves, up into the top of the head. 
it'll clean those out, it'll shove through there hydraulically. That's what meaner power cleaner does, but biodiesel doesn't break it apart, it just shoves it in there. So the first time you ever use biodiesel in an older truck, it will fill up your fuel filters and shut you down. And if you put a bunch of biodiesel in your tanks and you don't idle your truck and you go to restart it, it's very similar to what people are doing nowadays where they're trying to run diesel cars off of vegetable oil. They have to have a preheater to heat up the vegetable oil. They have to start the car off diesel fuel, bring the vegetable oil up to the viscosity of diesel fuel, that same kind of thinness, then it can be ignition by compression. It can be put into the motor and burnt. And they switch over to the tank that has the vegetable oil. You can't just run one off vegetable oil cold. Well, if you start up your truck after you put diesel fuel in it, that's mostly biodiesel, especially a high percentage, okay? That next morning, you go to start up, it's gonna run like crap. It will run, but it's gonna run like crap. There's nothing wrong with your truck, it's just trying to run off biodiesel that ain't heated up yet. Now, as you, you, you put more fuel back into your tanks than you actually use, and it makes your tanks hot. It makes that diesel fuel hot. If you don't believe me, stop sometime and touch the side of your tank and you feel it's not cold like gasoline, it's, it's warm. Because your pump is pumping way more fuel than you need and it's putting hot diesel fuel back in there and that's why they don't freeze in the winter time until you shut them off. Because you're pumping hot diesel and keeping it warm even if there's a low percentage of antigel in the fuel. So you done started with cold biodiesel, it's gonna run like crap till it heats up all the fuel in that tank and brings it to the viscosity of good diesel fuel. So, like I said, after number four would be, you could run some biodiesel, but plan on changing your filters out. Now, outside of that, you gotta get your, your tires balanced. Even the back ones. And, and self-centering lug nuts in the front doesn't hurt either. That's, that's what I was saying when you get new tires. But you, you, can put, you can put weights on the tires. You can pay for Centromatics. You can put beads in the tires, especially in the steers they like to do that. Or you can put golf balls in tires. You can put three golf balls in there and centrifugal force. I've done it. It beats the crap out of them if you got one that's way out around. But if not, they'll just roll around in there They'll beat themselves to death. Um, it's been done. You're better off with beads. Just buy the packet of beads. Don't do what I did, but I, I tried it. I showed it, you know, um, to a friend of mine when I took them off. I didn't, I didn't do a video on it, but uh, you can run three golf balls. But I would say the beads work, and they'll continue to to balance it as long as they don't get wet. Um, like if you had a hole and you were in the rain or something. Centromatics work, but you know, that's your decision if you want to run those. Now, there's some people that are running uh, super singles, like this one in front of me is super singles, okay? But you're not going to change to them and make money. You're not going to make money by spending a bunch of money on super singles like that because you just spend a lot of money out you won't get back for a while. So I'm talking about things that will help your truck. And you see the mud flaps to the right, bottom right hand corner of this. Get flow through mud flaps. That helps a lot on wind drag. Um, if you have a cab high truck and you don't have a wind flare on the top of it, a foil, get one from a junkyard and have it mounted and it will be less like you're pulling a billboard down the road. I had a cab high truck, an old Mac. Um, that's the other thing too. If you have a Mac, you got a whole nother different animal. There's an AB timing light that's required for changing fuel pumps. A lot of people don't know that and they'll change the fuel pump on their Mack truck and it's never set. It has to be set with an AB timing light. It's a special kind of timing light. Take it to the Mack dealership and have them check your fuel pump with the AB timing light to see if it's even in time. Or your fuel mileage go down but you're driving around in a Mack truck thinking you're doing something because they run a, you know, a long time and it, well, yeah, but you're getting horrible fuel mileage. Nobody should be, ever be getting like 5.5 unless you're hauling that big parachute with a bunch of cows in it, you know, the, those kind of trailers. So get an airfoil on the top, and if, like I said, if you got a Mack truck, get, have them check it with an AB timing light. The rest of these trucks are different. So if you, have a, if you have an older Detroit, you can have them reprogram a different computer 
and or even yours and you know, or you can swap it out and they'll match a turbo to it and you can be getting the kind of fuel mileage these newer trucks get on your older Freightliner or you know any any type of older truck um, you can look into that it's kind of like Freightliner or Peterbilt or whatever 2.0 you're updating to their fuel air ratio for that better turbo and the whole thing works better it's just a big air pump it doesn't know that's that's why diesel engines they call it dieseling when a car keeps running and won't shut off diesel engines don't care they'll keep running but they don't know the difference whatever that computer tells them to do with the fuel air mixture is you know what it does another thing is like I said if your injectors aren't firing right in the first place that meaner power cleaner will clean them out and make them work better you're gonna find it as soon as you put that in there one bottle of that stuff like I said treats um, each each third of it treats 120 gallons um, that will fix your problem with fuel mileage and power and all kinds of stuff even on a truck with a couple hundred thousand miles on it you'll notice the difference immediately and if you do that every three tank fulls you're helping because they took your sulfur out of your diesel fuel it's ultra low sulfur diesel you're helping the pistons to go up and down smoother you're helping for top end lubricity and you're helping your fuel mileage that is the answer people are looking for so when you ask me the first thing I'm gonna say is other than you got something dragging or a problem with your engine or a brake chamber dragging and the way you check the brake chamber by the way is with that uh, non-contact uh, thermometer that you can get you can get them at Harbor Freight Advance anywhere for about 20 or so uh, but that what I call it I call it a heat gun that heat gun will tell you if you have something dragging go around check all your tires and all your hubs and while you're supposed to be doing a tire check in the daytime use that as part of your tire check and write all the different numbers down of what the temperature of the tire was and the rim and the hub those three things and if one of them is way hotter than the rest then you got a brake chamber dragging and that's killing your fuel mileage um, or you got a tire that's out of round and it's running odd and that's the tire only but not the hub you'll see the difference the tire will be instead of 112 degrees it'll be like 150 degrees it'll be so drastic you can write it down you can see you take it into the shop before you blow a tire you fix the problem and you go further have them take a rim while you're getting new tires and spin just the rim and see if the thing's out of round or not that will help but balance your tires have them all balanced even the drives it'll take the hop out of everything and that alone will make it better on fuel mileage you know it's it's all of these things together uh, is gonna help your fuel mileage now if you've got an older truck or used truck of any sort I'll tell you what also will help have them add some Lucas not to your engine because I don't I'm telling you if I had a Mack truck once that leaked it was a 92 Mack it had a short a small leak but boy when I put some Lucas in there it built up the pressure and it started leaking from everywhere I do not recommend putting Lucas additive into your engine oil even though some people put man I put you know three of that or whatever that's insane it started leaking from everywhere it builds up the pressure too high the trick of Lucas is it keeps oil from getting hot it's like a motor honey like when you're building an engine and you tap the pistons in and you add motor honey all around it because it's thicker for your first startup it'll keep it slick it's like engine assembly lube in a way but it's for the pistons you drown the rings in that stuff well and wipe down the cylinder walls will it with it well uh, that's STP engine treatment is what I use for that but if you're if you're working with an 18-wheeler I can tell you that adding some Lucas oil the quart of that stuff adding that at least half a quart to each of the rears and about a half a quart or more to the transmission will keep that oil from being so hot and then when you keep heat down it's able to lubricate better so you'll get better fuel mileage have them like I said keep on top of changing the oil in your rears and in your transmission that what where are we on number seven here now like I said somebody asked the question for the last time before I'm like I'm gonna drop a video I'm gonna put all this stuff out there now I'm gonna see if I even 
have everything off my mind right now because like I said, I made a list on a color note on this device. I thought my other device would go on there. It did not. So I had to take a picture of that. So let me go through a few things here. Um, make sure that I, this was all just off my mind, off the cuff. All right. So let's see here. Did I go over everything is a question for fuel mileage. Because I mean, I'm sure there's a few more things I know about. Oh, that's the other thing too. If you could completely close the gap between your 18-wheeler and a trailer, you would get better fuel mileage because of the wind drag. But we can't do that unless you're hauling the same trailer all the time and you hook up these tarps in between your truck and trailer. So the trick to that is, if you've got a stretch, okay, and you're trying to beat bridge laws by having a stretch on an 18-wheeler and you've got a gap that's 15 feet between your truck and your trailer, I can't help you. Not at all. But if you've got a truck, with a sliding fifth wheel. You can't slide it too far forward, but don't slide it all the way back either. You want that center of that fifth wheel where it pivots, the, the, it's the pivot point, to be centered just about center between your front set of drives and your rear set of drives, which will put your trailer so that it doesn't hit when you turn, it don't hit the back of your truck, you can't have that but so it's not so far back that you're catching a lot of wind. It's like you're pulling a billboard down the road. That's going to kill your fuel mileage too. So you want to make sure your fifth wheel should be set. A lot of these are fixed. Some of them slide. Okay. Make sure your slider's right. Um, but uh, that's your wind drag. And so here's what I wanted to, to get into. Okay. Salesmen for these products like those wheel covers that you see right there and the center pieces that stop drag and even the wheel to wheel fairings on these trucks they will want you in air tabs and things you buy at the truck stop okay because you can get a k and n type filter that's a good idea too and it'll really help your fuel mileage um but they're a pain and you got it's good to have two of them honestly but you can get one that's there's one in at a napa in arizona that's a something blue there's something blue in the name and it's an air filter that has a foam surround that's the one I recommend if you're gonna do that because the foam surround helps it and it's you put oil in it and then it helps but it allows a lot more free flowing air everybody that has a dually that runs hot shot changes their Ford air filter over to a K&N type filter because it's that much better on fuel mileage but if you get into it and mash on it hard it's also you know you're going to get more horsepower but you're going to eat your fuel mileage up but getting back into the filter and all these little products that are, you know, they got a tornado air thing that goes on your air filter intake. They've got, uh, it's supposed to swirl the air like a vortex. They've got fuel added uh, rail systems that take your fuel and they say it does something to it before you get it. Okay. And air tabs and everything else. Here's the problem. The problem is this. Each one of those salesmen will have you believe that their products work independently of the rules of physics. In other words, if you've got a truck that's already getting 8.5 miles a gallon, they're going to tell you that that product will get you another 2 to 4 or 8 or whatever miles a gallon. <laughs> I mean, if you added up all these products, if you put air tabs on your truck and it's already got wheel-to-wheel -wheel fairings, it's already got hubcap covers, it's already got everything I just mentioned done to it, and it's a new engine. They will have you believe that if you add all that up of what one product says it's going to get you per miles per gallon better than what you are getting. Let's just say you add air tabs and you're supposed to get three more miles a gallon. Okay, or two, two, just say one more mile a gallon, whatever, half a mile a gallon, whatever. Um, if you add it all up, every night you're going to have to stop and park take your fuel caps off your fuel tanks and let all that extra diesel fuel run out because they're going to have you believe in your making diesel because at the point where instead of it running off of you know you, you're making six miles a gallon then well if you put this product on you'll make seven miles a gallon you put this on you'll make eight miles a gallon by the time you're done you'll be making diesel fuel you have to open up a fuel station just for driving down the road you'll be making fuel you won't even be using it anymore right wrong there's a brick wall we all will hit. Um, they're trying to do research and say that trucks are getting, 
you know, closer to 10 or even 11 miles a gallon, that's not an 80,000 pound load going down the road, any kind of mountains, that's not an average, that's not anything, except them getting research money from the government to do research grants, okay? It's another PSYOP to make you believe that one day you'll have that. You won't. I will tell you what you will have. Okay, now, if they ever change bearings in trucks and use low drag ceramic that can hold up, um, like racing bearings, you could possibly get a lot better fuel mileage once that happens. But that wall, that cosmic speed limit, like Einstein's theory of, you know, the speed of light, even though it's, you know, eh, you know, they, they've proven that there's things that move faster. Um, your wall is going to be about 9.5 miles a gallon. Will you reach that with that truck? No. You'll get maybe 8.7. The things I talked about, though, are going to get you closer to that 8 to 8.2, 8.5 mark than what you're currently at now. What you're currently at now is 6, 6.2, 6.5, 6.7. If you haven't run meaner power cleaner, changed your air filter every two oil changes being about every 40 to 45,000 uh, miles or even every oil change, depending on your dusty environment you're in because it's creating, you know, it, it's heavier too, just like your muffler would be. If you have older style mufflers, get the aftermarket one that's more free flowing. Okay, and easy on the pedal, but I'm not, I'm saying if you're driving, if your truck set at 70 and you're hammered down at 70 all the time, you should not be getting four miles a gallon, five miles a gallon. Even with a load, even averaging with mountains, you should be getting better fuel mileage, okay? So your fuel filters have to be changed more often also. So when you extend that oil change, don't forget you're extending your fuel filter change. What is that? Robbing you of fuel flow, robbing you of fuel mileage, along with the air filter. People are gonna say, well, it pumps more fuel than it needs. Yeah, it does. But that high pressure, just that little bit of difference. I'll tell you what, when one's completely constricted and shuts you down, you'll get zero fuel. You'll better understand how it affects things then. So if it's constricted at all, it's air in, air out, but it's also fuel. So what would I do? All of that, plus I would get flow through mud flaps, plus I would look into having a dyno done. See what your truck's putting out. <coughs> Definitely have them check your slack adjusters and see if any of them's dragging. Have them check your brake chambers see if any of your brakes, the, the true way to really check if you've got drag on a truck, even if your brakes are adjusted up to what they're supposed to be, uh, and they're supposed to have automatic slack adjusters, but jack up the axle and turn the wheels by hand, and then let go and see if they still spin. You might have a bearing that's over tight that some idiot changed a wheel seal and tightened up the bearing too much and didn't back it off. They're supposed to tighten it all the way up and then back it off. You might have a brake chamber that's dragging just enough or it's adjusted up too much that it's dragging and that's killing your fuel mileage and eating up your tires. Okay, you might have a O-ring on your airlines going to your trailer that's got a slow enough leak that it's not letting the brake chambers be released because you're just trying to release them. They always lock up. So they're trying more to drag you got to make sure that you're not losing air from anywhere. You know, the way these things compress, um, they can mask a lot of air leaks. So, like I said, I've been asked that the most is, is there anything I can do to get better fuel mileage? The truth is, there's everything that you can do. Okay? And I would reset. I'm going to do a video on how to reset it. It was too much of a pain. I tried to do one. I would reset your fuel mileage every day, okay, on your truck, on your dash, so that you know daily what you're getting, and that will let you know even before you stop that something's wrong. If it doesn't climb from zero, and then four, and then eight, and then whatever, up to what it should be, which is about anywhere from seven and a half, 
you know, eight, eight and a half miles a gallon, if it doesn't climb back up to what it normally climbs back up to about halfway through your day, you might want to check again with the heat gun, again with maybe see if you got a brake chamber leaking or something going on. If you, if you swap trailers and there's a problem with that trailer, it could be losing air out of the airbags, but trying to make a brake chamber drag and killing your fuel mileage, your bottom line. So that's what I can tell you. Um, and like I said, adding Lucas to the rears and to the transmission is a big thing because it keeps the heat down and it uh, makes things work better. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that I would say. Uh, definitely keep your oil topped off. I mean, you're going to have to make sure that you don't have anything dragging on the pulleys and that your air conditioner compressor is not dragging too much um, and about to wear out. All these things can affect your fuel mileage. But balancing your tires is a major step towards getting your fuel mileage right. And if you've got a warped rim, um, you're gonna put a new tire on there and it's gonna burn through that. If you have worn out chassis parts, like that bar I showed the other day, um, if you have any bushings that are worn out, that'll affect your alignment and that'll affect your fuel mileage because it'll wear your tires funny too, but it'll affect your fuel mileage because you're going down the road and it's not set. So worn out bushings can have your tires moving right to left when they're not supposed to, kind of like a trailer dragging behind a car. That's right, left, right, left all the time. That's what happens. And you have worn tires and it's going to kill your fuel mileage. Your fuel mileage is your bottom line. So. If there's anything I've missed or that I can think of, I'll put it in the comments, but I can guarantee you, you run a shot of Mina Power Cleaner and just the third of the bottle to half of a bottle, when you first run it, you'll know out the gate the difference. And if you run that every, at least three, th three tankfuls, if not every two to three tankfuls, and if you're running um, anti-gel in the wintertime that you add to your tank, a big gallon of that, the smaller bottle of Amino Power Cleaner is $18.99 or less. The bigger bottle of anti-gel is about 20, 28 to 25 or so or less. Um, and you can get that off your maintenance count if you have one at one of these places. Stop in a speed code, put that up on the counter, what you're going to use, and add that to your oil change, and that way you ain't got to pull it out of your pocket. So if you do all that, your injectors will be cleaner. You'll have more horsepower, lubricity in your cylinder walls and you will get better fuel mileage. So you don't have to be riding around at 55, 62 miles an hour to get the better fuel mileage. What you have to do is have a better running engine. That's all I got. I'm, I got everything out of my head that I wanted to put out, I believe. Um, you wanna say something, go ahead, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go through, let's see here. I think that's, let's see. Now I'm gonna start looking at my list here that I had that I wanted, like I said, uh, but the, you know, it's the, like the difference between 55 mile an hour versus 65 versus 70. Uh, 70 is that brick wall where you start to get worse fuel mileage, but even if you, you know, you can't drive around at 35 miles an hour and get good fuel mileage, it tips the other way, it gets worse. So, um, you know, and Bully Dog has some fuel things that change your horsepower and stuff, but, I would say uh, start out with all the stuff I said before you mess with Bully Dog, but you can get get your computer, a new computer that's tuned different with a different uh, turbo. Let's see here. Um, did I go over everything? Let's see. Yeah, and I even talked about biodiesel. First time you get that, if you got something, I mean, a lot of these trucks, whether you, you'd be surprised, it will it will shove all that stuff into your fuel filters. So you're gonna want to change them. Let's see. Um, but yeah, the most you're gonna shoot for is about 8.9. You will probably never make it past that on anything. Uh, but I will say this, bobtailing, you should be getting uh, between 11 and 13 and a half. 11 to 13, 13 and a half. Um, let's see here. Anything else I'm missing? I 
believe that's all. So, other than that, I'm having some fish, some cod is what they're calling it. As far as I know, it can be a uh, pilot flying J fish. I, I don't have a clue. They just put it in here, they fry it, and uh, anything can happen because I'm having Zaps Voodoo Fries. <laughs> New Orleans style, kettle style voodoo fries. So, fish and chips, people. I'm going to get off this thing. I'm going to eat this. Um, I will say this before I go. This is the math I was going to give you the breakdown. This is the truth of it all. Okay. Right now, if you're doing 600 miles a day, at 6.5 miles a gallon, the math of it, that's 92.307 gallons. Multiply that times 245 a gallon, price-wise. Okay, that is $226. Now, if you get your truck to run in 8.5 miles a gallon, 600 miles divided by 8.5 miles a gallon, you're talking about 70.58 gallons. You multiply that times 245 a gallon, that's $172.94. $172.94. So that is about how many miles you run in one day. So the difference between the $226 a day at 6.5 miles a gallon and the $172.94 a day. So $226 is what it'll cost you. $226 is what it'll cost you to run one day 600 miles at 6.5 miles a gallon. It's gonna cost you $172 to run 600 miles if you're getting 8.5 miles a gallon. If you multiply that, that's $54 difference per day. If you multiply that times 25 days, which is a month, every month you just brought home $1,350 more than if you did not get your truck to go from 6.5 miles a gallon to 8.5 miles a gallon. Now, if you're doing what they say you can do, or they can do with trucks, which is 9.5 miles a gallon, I did the math on that too, that's only, uh, that's only, 63.157 gallons two dollars and 45 cent a gallon multiplied that times that is 154.70 a day and you would save 72 dollars a day off the 6.5 multiply that times 25 days it'd be 1800 dollars a month savings but you're not going to reach that so just know where you're at if you can get from 6.5 miles a gallon to 8.5 miles a gallon you can work less because you'll make, with that alone, $1,350 more a month. Like I said, I'm not going to be your financial guru, but I can tell you how to make the truck work better. That in itself saves on mechanic costs, saves on your fuel mileage, and helps you to get where you're going. And you'll have money in your maintenance account for when the big stuff happens. So people, I'm going to get off this thing. That's all I got. Watch it, like it, share it. Everybody that talks about fuel mileage starts talking about whether they should buy a newer truck or not. I'm telling you that your truck ran off the assembly line with some kind of decent fuel mileage. What you're wanting to do is get back to that or surpass that if it's old enough to change the computer and the turbo out. So, y'all stay safe. I'm going to get off this thing. That's all I got for you. Um, I appreciate y'all showing up and, like I said, share my video. Tell people that are truckers that don't know from day one when you get a truck they're like what do i do well i just laid it out for you so y'all stay safe i'm getting off this thing that's all i got if i can think of anything else i'll put it in the comments i'm out peace